Neil Adams, born June 15th, 1941, creator or co-creator of Ra's al Ghul, Jon Stewart, Man Bat, Merlin, Mockingbird, and Ms. Mystic, known for his important run on Green Lantern, uh, Green Arrow, and his extensive cover work at DC. Maybe most importantly, a huge proponent of creator rights, including credit to Siegel and Schuster on the Superman film. Passed away April 28th, 2022. George Perez, born June 9th, 1954, creator or co-creator of Cyborg, Deathstroke, Taskmaster, Maestro, Raven, Vigilante, known for his work on Teen Titans with Marv Wolfman, Avengers with Kurt Busiek, Infinity Gauntlet with Jim Starlin, and of course the revamp at DC of Wonder Woman. Passed away May 6th, 2022. Uh, this is a previews episode, though we didn't feel it uh, appropriate to not at least mention the passing of these two, uh, Neil Adams and uh, George Perez. We will almost certainly in an upcoming episode uh, spend <laughs> quite a bit of time uh, talking about uh, these two artists, but uh, we just felt like we needed to give some type of little uh, in memoriam uh, for these two. Uh, Mike, I know you probably have a couple of things you'd like to say. Uh, okay, one thing is that his, I think, of all the things you mentioned, George Perez uh, being a co-creator and, and known for, um, the one thing I'd like to add is Crisis on Infinite Earth, which is probably his magnum opus, and, you know, that he that he did with uh, more of Wolfman. I think it, it almost broke him, uh, according to reports, <laughs> and I'll save the rest for that, that episode that we do dedicated to um, both he and Neil Adams. And for Neil Adams, I'll say um, he was the first artist where I I just stopped and thought, this is what art should look like. You know, because a lot of my earlier years was, you know, not to give any discredit to any of the other, you know, the Kurt Swans of the world or whatever. But when you've seen covers by Neil Adams, you just you just stopped and stared in awe. So um, but I, I look forward to talking about it more uh, when we do that at the, one of the upcoming episodes. Shad, don't want to leave you out. Anything that you'd like to add uh, before uh, we kind of move on? No, I uh, I I have appreciated both of their art, uh, of course. And uh, Neil Adams seemed like a really cool guy. I got to meet him once at a con and uh, have him sign some stuff. And uh, seems like they were they were both really. Uh, fan oriented seem like they both wanted to interact with people and uh so yeah two big ones missed uh definitely so okay uh before we jump into previews uh just a reminder that this is the campus comics cast and this is the official podcast for muddy monster comics in murfreesboro uh, illinois 1422 walnut street if you haven't been to the shop before uh please uh stop in check it out and then of course there is the uh, muddy monster comic con that's going to be occurring on july uh, 23rd i'll be there i think we're all going to be there so um definitely come and uh do a meet and greet with us and of course we'll have comics for sale uh mike will be there talking chad you're going to be performing right we'll do we're doing something we've got a okay. got a little bit of a show planned so yeah okay. some music will be had good deal so um i do want to point out that there's actually a lot of stuff going on uh news wise i'm just going to mention some of these in passing before we jump into um uh, before we jump into previews, uh, <laughs> Facebook podcast is going away. Uh, they yep. added that uh, like two months ago, and <laughs> now it's getting pulled. So if you had not been using it, stop. Uh, the, we're going to talk about this a little later in the episode. Uh, Flux House from Matt Kent. Matt Kent's going to be getting his own imprint at Dark Horse. Much deserved. Um, <laughs> there's rumors going around, and maybe this is more than rumors, that Warner Brothers is going to be reorganizing uh, in such a way that they're going to kind of uh, separate DC comics and anytime historically this has happened in the past that is something that has gone prior to a uh, sell-off so that's mm-hmm. something we maybe want to address in the future and then of course Moon Knight and uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness so we'll not uh, again we're going to save those uh, topics for a future episode just wanted to let you know that we are aware of those things and we will be talking about those in the future now a big announcement related to the shop uh, Muddy Monster Comics is going to switch from doing pull list to having all of their previews customers be catalog customers. And what that means is that each month you're going to need to fill out an order form and get that to Mike. Um, that will help him with ordering, ensuring that everybody gets all their books. It'll help keep, you know, back issues from stocking up. Uh, as people will sometimes not 
stop in with that, <laughs> except for like every three or four months, you know. Um, so it's going to be a better system for everyone. So just uh, be looking for that. Uh, Mike made an announcement uh, on the Facebook page with regards to that. So if you happen to miss that announcement, uh, just give you another opportunity to be aware of that. So, all right. Anything else we should talk about before we jump into D.C.? No, sir. All, all right. right so. Well, I've already done a lot of talking. So somebody else talk about page one, Batman number 125. Get in it, Mike. Oh, somebody. <laughs> somebody. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, Chip Zdarsky, uh, this is like one of my wishes come true <laughs> that he comes over and does a DC character. And, well, he's already uh, on. Uh, wasn't he doing World's? So he just did cover for World's Finest, isn't that right? Maybe. Yeah, he did, okay. I think, a variant cover for World's Finest. The only thing he wrote for DC in the, in the recent past is the uh, JLA or Justice League Last Ride, which I really liked. And uh, he's taken over the Batman title uh, with issue 125. And uh, he's got the esteemed artist Jorge Jimenez um, uh, by his side. And it's even though I'm not the biggest fan of Jorge Jimenez and his angular style, um, I will be picking this up because it's Zadarsky. And uh, he's he's just got that kind of name. Uh, who knows how long uh, for the foreseeable future means, but I think it's worth anyone that is a Batman fan to, if you've been unsure about whether to continue, now's the time to reboot and go ahead and start picking it up. Sadarsky has shown that he will stick with the book. I mean, he's already he's already 30 something issues into Daredevil. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, that's they started a new number one after issue, I think, 32. They did the Devil's Reign, and then they're they're doing a new number one. So he will probably, you know, be on this book for an extended period of time. Would be my guess. I did think it odd that uh, they gave us four pages of art preview for Jorge Jimenez, as well established as he is. It's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I just thought that was a little bit a little bit strange. <laughs> but uh, hey, I guess you can get a get a little peek at what uh, Batman's going to look like moving forward. So, and he's evolved. He's evolved a little bit. He's not quite as manga looking um these days he's he's it's it's more mainstream or more house style i guess not that not everybody likes house style but he's yeah. got a good uh his his storytelling capabilities are really good well my next thing is not till page 16 <laughs> so i'll let uh i'll let you guys go for a little bit here uh, well, on page four, we've got another new creative team on Detective, uh, starting with uh, issue 1062 uh, with Ram V and Raphael Albuquerque. Uh, and I, we've talked about Ram V here uh, about not being wowed by him. I feel like this is kind of the last shot that I would have is like, OK, can you pull off this supposed gothic opera mystery kind of thing and. If you can't, uh, then I don't I'm I'm definitely not going to don't fool me again kind of a thing. And uh, I really like Raphael Albuquerque's artwork. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited that I really like American Vampire. Uh, and uh, the covers seem interesting. You know, this whole this artwork around the Gotham Nocturne and the, the half mask on the on the Batman there and. Uh, so they're doing something interesting with it. I, I can't say that I've I've seen a lot of this approach to it. So uh, whether it's good or not, to be determined, but worth <laughs> worth checking out, maybe. Well, Dark Crisis continues uh, with issue two. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's it's we don't it's hard to speak. Normally, I don't really want to talk about any kind of series uh, until you start until you're you know past the first issue uh and you've been able to start reading some of the issues but this is supposed to be a game changer of a series there are the obligatory spin-offs like the dark crisis worlds without without a justice league superman number one and what's interesting it's written by tom king and it's got a, a cover that features what looks like the golden age superman and a version of robin mm -hmm. so uh that looks interesting but I'm he's got an S like, on his chest instead of an R. Exactly, yeah. So he's a Superman. Super analog, Robin. <laughs> or a Super Robin, yeah. Or uh, Superboy. 
<laughs> yeah. Yep. So all of those, I, I plan on getting all the, the main series and whatever spinoffs, just because that's what I do. That's what I do, and that's what I have done. And uh, tie-ins, whatever. And you said where, Scott? Where was your next issue? I'm next actually on 16. So. Okay. Uh, I, I probably will pick up the Black Adam Justice Society files, even though it's got a hyphen and a colon. Um, <laughs> Black Adam and hyphen Justice Society files colon Hawkman number one. That new, normally runs me off, but part of it's intrigued because they obviously are uh, mimicking the, uh, you know, they they are going after the rock the rock the Dwayne Johnson uh, as he he looks just like they designed him right after the rock, mm -hmm. and but it's Hawkman too, so I always like a Hawkman book. You don't get very much of them these days. I don't have anything for a little bit. Well, uh, page 16, then, uh, Young Justice Targets. Uh, this is actually a tie-in series to the HBO Max uh, Young Justice uh, series that's running every Thursday. And I think it's back down to its last three or four uh, episodes for this season. So it will probably be wrapping up just a week or two before this book uh, hits the shelf. So for anybody who's a fan of the HBO Max Young Justice series, you'll be able to, you know, get a, get a fix until... Yeah. Season five, assuming season five comes out, uh, makes it back to HBO Max sometime probably next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, page 18, I, you know, I, I assume, uh, Mike, you had this down? No, I didn't. Oh, OK. Well, then uh, <laughs> Superman Space Age number one uh, here. It looks like to me that they are giving Superman the life stories uh, treatment. Um written by Mark Russell and art by Mike Allred. And I kind of get the implication that they are going to kind of move Superman through uh, various decades. And maybe it's going to be a little bit more of a, you know, what if he actually were in a world where everybody, because, you know, he really doesn't age, but everybody around him, you know, was, was aging. So at least that's how I feel, what I feel coming from yeah. this, uh, from, from this, uh, uh, you know, solicit. So, yeah, that's what I was picking up too. And, and it seemed like from the way it was worded on this first issue that they're, that he is learning, going to learn that crisis on infinite earth is going to happen and kind of mm -hmm. is watching it happen around him and kind of gets the inside scoop ahead of time somehow, uh, which I thought was a, a kind of interesting angle to take on it, but they'll, it, all, it almost, that. Yeah, it's almost like this is crisis is the event that brings Superman out. You know, it's just like he yeah. was kind of like staying hidden before this. So mm -hmm. I think yeah. what what caused me not to to earmark this page is I'm not a big all red fan. <laughs> and yeah, I mean it may be fine, but I'm not. Uh, I'll probably pick it up, but it wasn't. <laughs> <probably better. laughs> uh, I don't have any little. 35 um on 20 i've got 20 uh what's on 20 let's get there all right uh <laughs> the uh batman white knight presents red hood number one which is another of sean murphy's white knight uh world that he's kind of created and this is setting in the uh the white knight beyond or beyond white knight whatever series they're calling it um, where Jason Todd is giving us a little bit of uh, a backstory on him in this world uh, with a two issue mini uh, that's that's just kind of handled the the Red Hood days, it says, because I think if I'm not mistaken, I didn't read too far into it, but I believe that Jason Todd is our Batman beyond in this series. It's not Terry McGinnis. Um, and so he is Red Hood and then he is. Hmm the Batman beyond I might be wrong, but I think that's what I remember from the original solicit of the beyond white Knight uh, kind of description. That was what was going on there. I haven't read any of the Batman white Knight stuff. I started to, but that's as far as I got. I started to like two. Yeah, I read the first series. Yep. Did you? Yeah, it was good. I mean, I just, it's just uh, so much content. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Overload. Yeah. I, I think the only thing I have left to, uh, to talk about is on um, page 43. Okay, well, page 35, uh, Batman Killing Time number five. I, I guess I just keep missing this. I don't, 
it's Tom King, so I, I should have been buying this all along. I don't know if I've picked up any of the issues. Has has anybody been reading the first issue yes, or two of this series? I did, and it's great. Okay, it's oh, I need to track it down then. So, <laughs> and then on page, I get same question, page thirty nine. <laughs> Uh, Justice League versus uh, Legion of Superheroes. Is anybody picking that up and reading it? Yes. I read okay, the first how's... issue or two. Okay, because it's it, also at issue five. Yeah, it's typical Bendis. Um, it's got its moments. Okay. It, do you, does it feel like a continuation of his Legion of Superheroes story, like where it was probably going to be heading before? Or do you think it's a whole new... No, it's, a, it's, it's, it's more tied to the Dark Crisis, I think. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's what I assume. I think, I mean, I can't even tell you why I say that, but it's it's, <laughs> it's definitely not just a continuation. It's it's somehow tied to what this big event was going to be bringing. And then also on page 39, uh, Monkey Prince number six, which I thought was a limited series, but they're not soliciting that as a limited any longer. It's just, it's at issue six and doesn't say of six or of yeah, 12 yeah. Or, or anything it's like really that. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty good. Jin Wen Yang. Um, I it's forget who the artist well. is. I don't have the page up in front of me, but Bernard uh, Chang. Okay, yeah. So there you go. It's very, very clever. Um, it's, you know, it's a uh, kind of a uh, extension of the Monkey King legend, the Chinese legend, and uh, it's it's got. I mean, if they if we give it some give it some room to grow i think it will be worthwhile it's it's but it is very good just you know on its face too page 41 uh superman son of kal-el number uh 13 i had three in my notes um appears to be introducing a new character a dreamer um who as they say may be an ally of uh, superman son of kal-el so um, of course, anymore, they may be cameoing in that character an issue or two prior to this number 13. So it'd be something to watch for, for those of you who are collecting first appearances. Um, page 42, Swamp Thing, number 15, same story. Uh, new character, uh, Trinity. Uh, so same uh, caveat, could be cameoed in 14 or 13, right? Could be on the shelves now, the first appearance of of this character, so it's another one to uh, watch out for. Um, what page did the guy say you're at? 43 for me. Okay, I'm also on 43. Mike, you go ahead. It's just the um, DC poster portfolio, Brian Boland. Um, I mean, it's his art style is very recognizable. Uh, he's been, I and mean, he's he's a He's one of those that came across the pond. He was part of the British invasion of creators. Uh, I'm sure, if I'm not mistaken, he did some of his first work with, you know, like uh, uh, the uh, 2000 AD stuff. But, you know, he's also no, he, he's kind of a not a real fast uh, drawer or artist, but he he's done. He's been very popular. He did The Killing Joke. He's um, he did a lot of covers on Wonder Woman. Uh, he did the Camelot 3000, uh, 3000 series, and uh, this one here is just a big, uh, let me zoom in a bit here, it's 12 by 16 mm -hmm. uh, poster book, and it, not 20 that I have room for it, it's, what's that? <laughs> 20 pieces. 20 pieces, yeah, it's not that I have a whole lot of room for it, but by golly, I can see myself laying it out on the dining room table and looking at it. Uh, <laughs> The cover here that the, they feature is the um, the laughing fish. It's the Joker holding the laughing fish. So uh, old school fans will uh, recognize it. New fans will, I think, appreciate the uh, the detail of his art. My last thing's on forty six. Good. Yep. Okay. So. Commandi by Jack Kirby, volume one. I've, this is one of those things that I've been wanting to actually read the Kirby stuff. And, um, you know, I don't want to just track down the individual issues. So I've been waiting for a collected edition. And I guess they've just been out. I feel like they've been out of print for a while. So we are now getting uh, volume one, which is going to uh, cover issues one through 20. 
And I will be honest, I'm probably going to go digital on that one uh, just because the idea of carrying around a 500 page uh, book, right. you know, to read. I don't necessarily like that, but uh, but I will definitely uh, probably pick this up on the or hopefully it will show up on the DC Infinite uh, app there at some point in the future. <laughs> sure, well, it features a cover, uh, a classic cover from Commandy number one. Number one, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, with him on the raft uh, and the Statue of Liberty sort of tipped over mm-hmm. in the ocean. You know, this is a post apocalyptic world that he lives in. Nothing to do with Planet of the Apes at all. No. Yeah, nothing at all. This is <laughs> not a rip off from that. <laughs> One of the best final scenes of any movie. I can think yeah. Of. <laughs> that's all I got in DC. So whatever everybody else has yeah. on DC. Oh, that's Same actually here. pretty in. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we ready to ready to move on to Marvel then? Yeah. Sure thing. Okay. Well, my first thing's on page two. Nobody wants page one. Okay. So no, good. you got. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna call this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and go to page two. You can go back to page one if you want. Uh, I'm gonna call this A X E, but I'm sure they're gonna be pronouncing this Axe Judgment Day number one. And basically, they are billing this as a Avengers versus X Men versus Eternal. And I kind of like the concept uh, of this book um, in the Eternal series. Uh, we've kind of learned that part of the role of the Eternals is to keep the Earth population from becoming too large. And I guess the uh, Avengers and the X-Men are taking exception to that. So <laughs> it's going to lead into some uh, fights between these three groups. Um, so and with the Eternals movies, um, and they're supposed to be back at some point in the future, I think uh, Marvel wants to try to get them a little bit more, uh, just a little bit more presence uh, in the regular Marvel universe. So I'd say more interaction with the others. Go, yeah. It seems like they've been pretty isolated. Even in their current eternal series, they're not interacting with, you know, other, other heroes, other villains. Yeah. It's just eternals and, and, uh, and, uh, oh my gosh, uh, deviants. <laughs> mm, yes. You know, so, um, one thing that is interesting, um, that we have, and it's kind of like a retcon, and this is probably something also that has something to deal with the trouble with the Avengers and the X-Men versus the Eternals is that the Eternals basically have uh, the world machine that whenever one of them dies, it brings them back. But what we learned in this Eternal series is that whenever one of them die, uh, they a, a, a human dies to basically uh, for the I guess the energy or whatever it is for the world machine to resurrect them. So uh-huh. every time they're resurrected, there's somebody else who has to die in their place. Huh. And we just kind of learned this in this most recent uh, Karen Gillan series. So, gotcha. Which is also very, very good. So, uh, and there's two issues solicited this month. So, that means it's only going to be a three month long crossover. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, my next thing's on 14. So, I got 12. Uh, on 12, we have uh, Demon Wars, The Iron Samurai, number one. Uh, it's a Peach Momoko uh, miniseries in the same world that she's built with her series of one-offs. Uh, so this is more of the kind of creations, her take on on all of the uh, Marvel Universe, uh, and they're at battle now. So it's just fighting, more more of the same, but now they're fighting. And maybe a more cohesive through story instead of the the one-offs because those are are seem pretty truly stand standalones from the one the couple that i've read um so yeah that'll be it'll be cool I'll, I'll pick it up you don't you don't see many peach momoko interior art uh or issues with her or with i guess it's her uh, art yeah right it is uh, yeah well she's had several of these demon wars series at, at marvel for a little while no, now, there's five so. there's five singles oh, five yeah. one oh, shots okay. and then mm-hmm. then then now this four issue the, the cover art it will still it's primarily cover art it, i yeah. thought you were gonna say yeah. you don't see a lot of peach pomoko covers uh, <laughs> that you're being silly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every yeah. series has a, a variant yeah. <laughs> She's one next, of the, uh, next one we of have the Shang Chi and the Ten Rings, which is the probably one of the few Marvel comics I'll probably pick up. It's uh, got Gene Luen Yang, who we just talked about with Monkey Prince. Oh, okay. And uh, he he's a really good writer. And uh, if I was going to pick this up, it would be because he's writing. Yeah, it's, I'm interested to see how long this is going to last. Uh, again, they're kind of trying to bring the Marvel Cinematic into the comics. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah. they're giving him the ten rings. Well, the ten rings presented in the in the movies are different than the ten rings as they're presented in the comics. So for Shang Chi to get the ten rings, that means Mandarin's got to lose them. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> we'll see right. how that goes and and how long that uh, that change lasts. I guess is is ultimately what we'll be looking for. That's I assume it will be a fairly short term thing, but who knows. Uh, page 17, uh, speaking of Peach Momoko, I am trying to decide if I like this co- this variant cover or not. Um, I don't like his I, head. I like everything else, but the, the head is very looking Batman-y. down. Yeah, it's yeah. looking down, you know, and I just I just I, I can't I'm undecided about it. I do <laughs> I need to see a larger version of it because. Yeah, I just, I just, I'm just not sure. So <laughs> it reminds me of a an Avengers or a Marvel Comics T-shirt I have where Captain America is looking down like that with his, it, his hands on top of his shield. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, my next thing's on 37. So I'm just gonna. I haven't really paid attention to the Amazing Spider-Man, but number seven. Uh, I'm sure he came back before this issue, but J.R. J.R. is the artist on the cover and interior. Um, but it's uh, featuring the return of Norman Osborn. And honestly, I, I, I like I like John Romita Jr. better on Spider-Man than, than any other character. So um, uh, it looks pretty good. You know, it's a, it's a status quo change. The... Uh... On on 25, they've got the Spider-Man 2099 Exodus Omega number one, which I know nothing about except for I thought it was important to note that it's the 30th anniversary of the 2099 series, and they're just gonna they're gonna finally finish it after 30 years. (laughs) (laughs) In case anybody was waiting around for the epic conclusion, I'm (laughs) I'm gonna gonna give I'm gonna give you a hint. They're not gonna finish it. Yeah, it will not conclude. It Dang will be it. back. I really it was, as a back. collector, I was going to pick it up. And... <laughs> I'm done. I'm finished. <laughs> no more 2099. Yeah, no, that won't happen. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, yeah, 20, still... this one, where are you what at? Where you... 37 is where I'm at. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I was just going to comment on 27. Oh, yes. As the the weirdest book in the in the entire uh, previews, yeah. I think. And I'll let you just talk about it, but I'm just going to say, just in case you thought they were running out of X themed <laughs> titles, we have the Exterminators, number one of five. And they're they've had do... Exterminators before, right? Yeah, but have they done it in Grindhouse, <laughs> uh, where they're they're threatening to have this gore horror related X Men title? <laughs> That felt like an idea that I was like, oh, wow, all right. They, uh, Jubilee, Boom Boom, and Dazzler are kidnapped and put into elaborate death traps in the uh, same way that you do with Saw. Saw, um, okay. uh, And I don't know why. Um, the artwork has no implications that it's going to be a horror-related comic. No. <laughs> um, hmm. so try, to I don't... try to decide if that's Honey Badger or if that's X-23. Oh, okay. On the on the cover in the variant cover and the oh, oh and well the, on both the corner. yeah yeah I don't really say so huh. yeah if they don't mention in the in they don't either. mention either way yeah yeah so okay <laughs> it's weird concept I don't know if that means it'll be different good or different bad yeah. I was so happy when they restarted X Men I thought they're gonna narrow it down to like maybe two to four <laughs> books and yes. It's I then it immediately ballooned to this massive thing. I just I said I'm not even gonna try. No, I'm just this is too much. I I can't. I I don't even want to try to keep up. With yeah, that. I was gonna keep up with it when when Hickman took over, but that was mm-hmm. I got through to the X Men number one after the Powers of Ten and the other mm-hmm. one, and then I stopped because I was like, oh, there's five more titles already. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm, I'm done at, with the Marvel book. Oh, okay. Well, then page uh, 37, uh, we have a new arc, uh, Hulk Planet, and possible new character again, who exactly is Monolith. So, Aunt Donnie Cates likes introducing those new characters. So, I mean, yeah. it's about one every other issue, as far as I can tell. 
So, <laughs> so he's he's maybe overdue uh, for a new character to pop up in a book. So, uh, yeah. So new character collectors and uh, page sixty. You got anything for sixty, Mike? No. Chad, you don't want to say anything about anything in Star Wars? No, there wasn't anything new that caught my eye. Okay, all right. So page sixty. I've talked about this book before, but uh, this is uh, Mike Allred. So sorry, but Dan Slott, uh, Mike Allred, Silver Surfer. This is the complete two volumes of their run on Silver Surfer, and uh-huh. this is one of the best stories I have ever read. And what's nice about it is it is basically self-contained. Through this entire story arc, you really don't have to know anything that's going on in the regular Marvel universe, um, and it is it is incredible. Um, I actually bought <laughs> the all new Marvel Point One because it had the first appearance of Don Greenwood, who is his companion uh, through this series. Even though I had to pay a ridiculous price, because it's also the first appearance of Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel. So. Mm. Uh, but I bought it for Don Greenwood, not for Kamala Khan. So, <laughs> but absolutely worth uh, worth reading. So I'll have to check that out. I do like all red stuff a lot. Yeah, and it, if you like, and I, well, I tell people if you have somebody who's a Doctor Who fan that mm-hmm. wants to get into comics, this is the comic for them gotcha. because you have this immortal universe traveler with an Earth companion. I mean that's that's and that's basically yeah. what it is. So <laughs> it's uh it's it's really really good. So and now I'm talking about it, I'm about to read it again. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's all I got in Marvel as well. So all right, all right. So the big book. I haven't even opened up my PDF yet for that one. So get that going. Uh, just a reminder, since while we're getting our PDFs opened up here, if you're you know moving forward, you need to be a uh, basically a catalog customer for books that you want each month. So you need to start providing Mike with the list of the books you want, and he will have order forms available. Um, be sure that anything you submit is legible. <laughs> I would strongly uh, suggest typing them, you know, typing up your list and even printing it out with larger, uh, larger letters. Just to make sure it's clear uh, what it is that you are uh, wanting to get. So just kind of as a, as a side yeah. note for that. And yeah. with that change, I assume he's also here. Historically, he's been doing orders on FOC final order cutoff. I think he's going to move back to the once per month type of ordering whenever he does this and then just add a few things on FOC. Um, so you'll want to get your orders in as close to the 18th of each month as possible. Um, like I said, I think we said before, you usually get in there a few days, but to play it safe, just plan for the 18th of each month. To try to have your order in with him. So, and if you don't have a catalog or you don't have a digital digital copy of it, you can go into the store and you can peruse the catalog, and he can provide uh, he will provide you a uh, an order form for you to fill out as you look at the catalog because it is a lot. Not I mean not everybody's going to buy the big previews catalog. Uh, mm-hmm. So. Uh, recommended that you take the time and, and plan on spending a little bit of time to, to look through it and identify what you want and that'll make sure you absolutely get what you're looking for yep all right my first thing's on page 40 you don't want to talk about the free comic book day books <laughs> <laughs> that were last week <laughs> yeah no of course you know anymore it's like it's always free comic book day i think i think they're just kind of having these books eternally available at least until they're ready to start for you know until they run out or mm. until um next year they start pu- pushing next year's free comic book day so yeah, yeah i thought it was weird to still have free comic book day at this catalog so yeah um yeah and, and stupid me i'm you know making my notes before i even realize that it's <laughs> the day has passed <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> and this is the first time in I don't know how long I didn't go any place for free comic book day because my son was graduating college that day. So mm. I was at a college graduation. Mm-hmm. So which I will take over uh free comic book day for one year. So. <laughs> yeah. One time though, that's it. <laughs> one time, yes. One time and one time only. <laughs> so um in, in, who wants to talk about page forty or am I the only one who wants to talk about it? Page forty, yeah, I marked it. I'm, okay, go. I don't I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I, I marked it. Uh, it's uh, Rogue's Gallery number one from Image. Uh, it's claiming to be 
uh, somewhere between The Purge and Scream and Misery. Uh, so very horror influenced. Uh, but when you look at the preview pages, the it, it's supposed to be this some like meta kind of approaches, kind of I think where the Scream influence is coming in, where they're working on a show and the the uh, villains from the show are somebody's cosplaying as them to yep. terrorize the cast, uh, which is very at least Scream Three, I would say. Uh, where they're or yeah, where they're they're sabotaging the the movie that they're basing Stab Five or whatever on, <laughs> uh, and but uh, the the show is more sci-fi influenced or superhero influenced, and mm-hmm. so the villains that we get are a little bit more they're cosplaying as something a little bit more superhero-y, uh, which I was like, oh, that that's an an interesting take. I'm I'm not entirely sold on it, um, but it. it is horror, but horror, superhero, cosplay, it's a lot of things. And I'm not sure they're going to stick the landing on any of them. (laughs) And what I thought was weird is like the, and if I, I just kind of skimmed these preview pages, but Mm -hmm. as you look at their, the reason why they're so, so they're mad at this actress, Maisie Wade, uh, because she is basically buying up all the collectibles from this television series that she was on. And they're uh-huh. mad at her for doing that. And this is why they're cosplaying as the villains to get back at her for buying up all the collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just I, that was a little odd. But, hey, yeah. it, there's been crazier stuff. So Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then page 44, we've got uh, Starhenge, book one, The Dragon and the Boar, number one. Uh, it's got Liam Sharp, who I, I know best from The Green Lantern with uh, Grant Morrison, but other people will surely know him for some uh, some other things. But this looks like a pretty serious uh, sci-fi series. Very uh, just from the art pages, it feels very Kirby high concept. Um, so because you have space and <laughs> Vikings or I mean, not quite Vikings, but uh, uh, yeah, just kind of a odd mix. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, he has a big in- imagination. I. I'm a big fan of his art. Uh, I was first exposed to his art in Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, the the arc where or the 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 run where Greg Rucka was writing, uh, and really loved it. Uh, but then he did something called The Brave and the Bold, which was a like a six oh. issue series with uh, that he wrote and drew. Yeah. Um, with Wonder Woman and Batman, and That's it great. was. Kind of tough to get. He was he had a lot of different ideas and it was very dense. I'll put it that way. And this looks more painted to me, mm-hmm. so it's a little different art than what I'm oh, seeing yeah. from him in the past. I, and I don't know. You know, like I said I haven't seen a lot of his stuff, but but definitely looks a little different. But you know, it's sci-fi, so I might give it a shot. So yeah. Uh, my next thing's on fifty-two. That's where I am. Same. Okay, well, what do you guys go? Go ahead, Scott, or uh, Shed. Uh, uh, this is uh, Above Snakes, uh, number one, which is an, another new series from Image. Um, it, it's The premise is a guy named Dirt is seeking vengeance uh, for his wife's murder, uh, and his partner is a talking vulture. Uh, it's written by Sean Lewis and art by... Hayden Sherman. I know neither of those names, uh, but it it kind of it it's it touts that it is uh, kind of a mix between Deadwood and Dark Tower, which I I've never watched Deadwood, but I do enjoy Dark Tower. Um, so you know it, it's saying the right things, but I'm 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 unsure about this one as well. I will add to that. Um, Sean Lewis, who is the writer of this series, also is the writer on the series Thumbs. Okay. And Thumbs is the first project that Todd McFarlane picked up for his TV studio. Oh. So theoretically, if something happens with Thumbs, then this could be a subsequent project uh-huh. for McFarlane's new yeah. uh, studio. If you know Thumbs is successful, then they may be looking for another Sean Lewis uh, uh, project to work with. So nice. Well, it, it had to be a dark tire, uh, like you said. <laughs> I've never really watched Deadwood or. Uh, I've heard about it. Sounds mm-hmm. good. But the Dark Tower is, it's like my first or second favorite 
favorite novel series and yeah. uh you know the, the, the stephen king series so and it's definitely a mashup in, a, in and of itself as a western slash mm-hmm. fantasy um so for that reason i i can't really pass this up my next thing is not till 124 whoa yeah oh, 58 <laughs> i got 63 go ahead mike 58 Scroll, scroll, scroll. Impact <laughs> Winter. It's a, a one shot by Travis Beachman and artist Stephen Green. Uh, it's a dystopian type uh, supernatural uh, uh, one shot or, or story. And it's, it's I guess, uh, the it, it's image, but it's the uh, we, Skybound is sort mm-hmm. of like the imprint. It's that uh, who who runs Skybound? I Kirkman. 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 Yeah. So typical of Kirkman. It's a uh, they're talking about uh, the world's. Uh, it's a one year since a comet hit Earth and blotted out the sun. Uh, now the world is a dark, cold landscape ruled by vampires, and it's a British countryside. It's got the right setting. It's got the right theme. It's it's end of the world stuff. I love that kind of stuff. Um, not that I have to read about vampires, but I also I mean. Man, if they're done right, I like reading about vampires. Dan Rice, you know, anything like that. So uh, I'm looking forward to to picking this up. It's a one shot, so you know, it's not much of a investment. Yeah. Now on, I don't have anything to 124. So. Okay. On 63. Speaking of Skybound, we have out of nowhere Skybound X number 25. <laughs> so we're skipping straight from issue five to 25. Um, I don't, I wonder what they're going to do with those. I thought I was like, man, are they already at issue 25 (laughs) on that series? Are you kidding me? It's like, no. Okay. I I thought there was 10. No, they just did five. They said five. Okay, man. I thought there were 10 of those. Okay. (laughs) They did five and then, uh, yeah. And then we hadn't had one in a while. And I thought kind of that new image anthology that celebrating the 30 years was like, Oh, we'll just do this instead. But no, it appears they're going to do uh, number 25 of it and uh, drive everyone qu- crazy in their numbering. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they're going to do uh, this is going to introduce four new series uh, and kind of a, a sampler pack uh, of kind of a way. We've got a new spinoff from Invincible called Battle Beast, uh, a new horror book called uh, Dark Ride that Joshua Williamson is writing. Um, we've got a new book called Chroma. Uh, that's got the the artist from Oblivion Song is doing uh, writer and artist work, and then a book called Scurry, or uh, yeah, a book called Scurry by Max Smith. Uh, all kind of in here and is got images of tomorrow is what it says on the cover of it. Uh, so I don't I I don't know if that's what they're going to use this book for as like kind of a a kickoff point for new number ones that are going to come down the line. And this will actually be the first appearances of new characters yeah. and that. So something to watch out for people. Uh, I'll pick it up cause I have the other five. Um, <laughs> and so then we'll, I'll anxiously await to see how they fill in six through 24 mm-hmm. at some point. <laughs> um, I also have 70 is, I, I don't have a, Oh, there we go. Uh, 70 is the uh, trade paperback for the Dog Days collection of Stray Dogs. Uh, so this has issue one and two of that we read on the show uh, of the Dog Days series, as well as the free comic book day prologue, which I'm sure I've read at some point in time, but I'm going to have to go back and, and track down uh, just to kind of make sure I've consumed them all and understand the story. <laughs> As a whole, so they aren't gonna do like a deleted scenes mix in. Uh, doesn't appear at least right now. They'll they'll do that down the line, and that way they can repurpose everything for an, another sell of the book. Uh, but it's surprisingly 128 pages. I guess maybe the were the 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 it was Dog Days like 50 pages per book or 48 maybe uh, per well, issue. Well, there were five issues. There were seven issues total. No, just the just the two, just the just the dog days. 
Yeah, I, I don't know, Shad. I was wondering that myself because it didn't seem like it was that long. No, but, you know, no they, were, they were just regular length stories, I thought. It's so like 22, usually it's like 22 storage page, storage pages thought. or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah so. I don't know where that other, where that page count's coming from, but I just thought, wow, uh, they're making a trade out of two issues. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're going to, they're going to milk it for sure. Um, I, I, the you only can thing buy I got two issues for less than the trade. Yes. <laughs> They're yeah. they're gonna it's gonna be filled with everybody's dog pictures in there. That's Maybe. what's gonna That's, be. Oh God, please don't. No. <laughs> uh, I got ninety eight. Have to buy it. <laughs> ninety eight's my next one. You're still you. Tell me. Okay. Uh, ninety eight is uh from Boom. Uh, they're doing a uh, original graphic novel called Hollow, uh, which uh you can choose to get the hardcover or the soft cover of. Uh, right on launch and this was uh, they had a free comic book day preview of this book it's a a sequel to sleepy hollow uh izzy crane uh moves to sleepy hollow with her family and the headless horseman shows up uh to fulfill the curse of the van tessel family and they have to solve the mystery of the headless horseman before halloween night so uh seems pretty familiar kind of retelling with the younger audience uh and a younger uh kind of approach to it all so just a, a a sequel to it. I haven't. I do. I did pick up the free comic book day preview of it, but I have not read it yet. So the Sleepy Hollow Legend. Where where was that? Was that really a part of a novel, or was that a, a short story? Or I mean, we all know about oh, it. I can't remember where that was ever printed, or who was the author, or anything. Gosh, and you know, we have the internet at our fingertips, yeah. but I'm too lazy to look it up. I I, I, I could. Oh, yeah. I used to be able to tell you who wrote it. Uh, Legend of Sleepy Hollow is written Washington by Washington Irving. Irving. Yep. Mm-hmm. Washington Irving, okay. Contained in a, his collection of 34 essays and short stories called The Sketchbook of Jeffrey uh, of Jeffrey Crayon Gent. What? What? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. So, so it's, it's just a short story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 1820. Okay. okay, there you go. I was, I was looking for the year, so I couldn't find the year, so... And my next one's not till 116. All right, well, it's still you then. Oh, dang. Okay. All right. <laughs> so get to 116. Get uh, there quickly. <laughs> on, on 116, uh, we have from Boom is Basilisk number nine. And this is the start of the final arc of the uh, horror series from uh, Cullen Bunn and Jonah Scharf. Uh, this has been really good. Uh, probably one of my favorite series that's going on right now. And uh, it's been a little break between eight and nine and so i imagine we'll be finishing up by issue 12 yep. of this yep. so hop i've on read in. issue one and i don't remember anything about it <laughs> so i guess i need to go back and read it again <laughs> it's uh yeah it's it's a really cool story of like these these five people who get this uh this power based on one of the five senses and they when they come down from the mountain they destroy this town and then there's this lady who her family was killed by them when they destroyed the town and she's seeking vengeance and she oh. uh she pairs up with the one who has the sight uh sense one who Which wears the drape over yep. her eyes wears okay. the drape over yes. her eyes. yep okay yep. all right that's okay. the one that's starting start to come back to me now okay yeah all it right. got pretty interesting <laughs> i'm uh, issue eight kind of cliffhanger was pretty cool so i'm interested to see what they do with this final arc anything else for 124 nope all right, 124 from Dark Horse. And I talked about this at the top of the episode as well. Mm-hmm. Mind Management Bootleg number one. This is going to be uh, the first of the Flux House imprint uh, underneath Dark Horse. That is going to be uh, Matt Kent. Matt Kent is writing this. And uh, this is basically a one shot. Oh, no, excuse me, one of four uh, based off of his Mind Management series, which was an extended series. If you're not familiar with uh, Matt Kent, he did Mind Management, Department H. He's also probably doing most of the heavy lifting writing on Berserker with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, he's he's definitely has lots of chops in the uh, in the industry. Um, I was surprised he actually sent out an email um, a while back to announce make this announcement about uh, Flux House, and uh, it was kind of a kind of a surprise to me because uh, I mean, obviously he's done a lot of stuff, but for him to get his own imprint is is kind of a big deal. So. Um, so anyway, this is something I will definitely uh, be picking up. And he normally he did all the he also did art duty on the original series, right? For yes. the whole thing. 
for mind management. Yeah. He does a lot more uh, painted um, painting type art as opposed to pencil. Not that he can't do it, but gotcha. it's, it's a, it's a different, it's a different style. So. Gotcha. I was, uh, it, it appears with this flux house imprint, they're going to mm-hmm. do like cards. There's going to be like these collector cards that are in, in with the these, bag. like yeah. they're going to bag them <laughs> and everything. Right. And is there a, there's not, there's not like a card game that's called Flux or something, is, isn't? Is there? Yeah, is but a, I think it has two X's instead yes. of one. Okay, so, so that's I a totally different thing. I, should be should be totally okay. different. <laughs> it's now, just coincidental. He does have, based off of mind management, there is a board game. Yes. That exists, but not yeah. a, it's not a card game. However, okay. that being said, they did a they did a re I don't know a redo on the game, and he he did artwork for a deck of cards. Oh. But again, it's still not. Still not part of that flux with two X's. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh-uh. Okay. So yeah, it should be something completely separate and different. So, uh, let's see. My next thing is on two eighteen. Got one sixty five. Where are you at, Mike? Well, I just looked at my notes and I don't see what page. I didn't write the page down, but it's. Go ahead. I'll okay. figure it out. What What uh, is it? It's uh the Gail Simone Red Sonia uh, number be one. Dy- it'll be in Dynamite someplace. So. Yeah, I'm looking through Dynamite now. But go ahead. So you probably. I'm also in Dynamite with 165. Um, and just because I enjoy when Dynamite does something besides their normal. <laughs> uh, and I don't. I'm I'm not gonna pick this up. Their, their normal but... what? Chad, their normal <laughs> You know the T and A books. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is Mad Balls versus Garbage Pail Kids number one, um, and I read this entire solicit twice, and I still can't figure out what it's even about. Um, so that just tells me that it's about nothing. I think the title says it all. <laughs> I was like, oh, I wonder what the premise is going to be. Because they did, uh, I think IDW had the Garbage Pail Kids uh, license for a while, a few years back. And they did a mini series. And I may or may not have picked it up or read it. But I felt like there was, uh, there was a trajectory of the story, no matter how loose it was, uh, to this. And they, they're not even interested in selling you. They're just... This entire solicit is about what the what the cards were and what the mad balls were like, and that's it. They're just like, hey, this is a recap of this time capsule of of things. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it, but it looks like they're gonna battle. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say they're gonna fight. All right. <laughs> Did you find I your found page? Red, I found Red Sonia. It's on 183. Is that before or after you, Scott? Uh, I'm at two. I'm at 200. So 218. Okay. So I, I've only read two or three Red Sonia books, uh, and I would probably pick this up because it's a Gail Simone uh, run from back in two, 2013, and this is just the you know the reprint, facsimile reprint uh, of that first issue um, with her uh, on as writer. The author is Walter Giovanni. Um, you know, uh, I'm assuming he's pretty good. Uh, the cover looks good. And uh, well, I don't know. Gonna... Jenny Frison. Frison. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, oh you're so. right. It's Frison. Yeah. OK, so, well, maybe. Yeah. Either way, uh, it looks like something to pick. up. I think wasn't this though, like a wasn't this when Gail Simone did Red Sonny, wasn't it a dark horse then? I don't know yeah, that it was that dynamite was, yeah. back then. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it was. So I was thinking I, I, the story I, I, of. Uh, Mike's uh, Red Sonia statue at the store. <laughs> How the customer dropped it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> uh, got 214. Two four, you're for me. Okay. Uh, that's me too. I'm at yeah. 214. Well, talk Where about it. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, this is Animal Castle Volume 1 from Ablaze. And uh, this is, I've been waiting for the collected edition of this because I, I picked up issue one and, uh, really dug it i thought it was a a really cool it's a a sequel ish to animal farm um and uh it's got a really dark tones but it's got a lot of heart in it uh if you like talking animals uh it's got that as well um and so i the darkness the and all of that just was really cool to me uh the artwork's awesome in it and uh it kind of also reminded me of like the the can the animals 
and the animal heart hierarchy of like secret of Nim uh, was mm-hmm. kind of kind of sprinkled in there with the the cat is like a mom and she's got a she's kind of standing up. You see it on the front cover. There's a little cat standing in front of the big big old bull who's the the king uh, of everything. So I I really dug issue one and uh, was like oh I'll I it wasn't around any of the local stores and I didn't end up ordering it. So I was like oh, I'll wait for trade I guess. So now it's here. Yeah, I'm glad it's in a hardcover. It just looks like the type of book you want to have in a hardcover. Mm-hmm. And I, I wasn't really sure if it was a sequel or an like a, an unofficial sequel to Animal Farm, but um, that's the feel I got from it, and that's why yeah. I really wanted to pick it up. I, I in hearing you um, give good reviews for the first issue uh, just uh, reassures me even more that it's it's something I should get. Mm-hmm. For sure. 218, uh, also from Ablaze, we have Promethe 1313. Uh, this mm. is a, doesn't say, I assume it's an ongoing uh, series from Andy Diggle. And it uh, the premise is, I guess you have a young girl, Darla, who apparently this cult militia thinks that she is the key uh, to the apocalypse that is about to come. Because as she apparently she was abducted by a UFO as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the events leading up to September 21st, 2019 at 1313. So that's the, the title, but, uh, I don't know. Andy Diggle, I've, you know, he's had some good stuff and some bad stuff. Uh, but the cover for some reason just caught my attention and, uh, made stop, you know, he got to have something to make you stop and read the, right. you know, read this, you know? So, um, it, there was enough there that I'm a little interested in picking this up. So. That's real interesting because this was a Comixology Originals uh, book. Really? Originally. Okay. Say that. Did they say that any place here? No, they don't. I was just reading it, but I remember when it came out, uh, and when it when they released it on Comixology Originals, I was like, "Oh, that book looks interesting." Interesting. I think I added it to to read it, but never got around to it. Um, See, now I won't even buy it. Now I'll just have to go. <laughs> I'll just go read yeah, it on Comixology. So <laughs> it's still on there. Uh, but yeah, I was. I, it's weird that they've teamed up with the Blaze, or maybe they gave the maybe there was an owner Fred rights thing yeah. where it just went right back to to them and they it, shopped it, it. Some of those comicsology things, I know that um, Jeremy Hahn has one on there called Forty Seconds. It's like a okay. four or five yeah. part. I think that they probably retain like print rights, so probably after a certain amount of time, they automatically to take it somebody and, and get it printed. So gotcha. Whereas yeah. like I know Scott Snyder team he specifically in his deal was Comixology and then Dark Horse. Like that was yeah. all kind of tied together. So I guess mm-hmm. it just it's per creator. Yeah. Uh my next thing's on two twenty six. I got two thirty six. Okay, so uh, on page 226, we have the Marvel Big Book of Fun and Games. They used to do these comic book size puzzle books um, mm-hmm. that you can actually find on the newsstands. And I picked up a few of those uh, as a kid. So I, uh, you know, I guess I should, you know, uh, pick this up and work all the puzzles just to, just to see if I'm still as smart as I was whenever I was, you know, <laughs> eight or nine buying these uh, <laughs> originally. <laughs> <laughs> but i just it just it was just a little bit of a flashback you yeah know? yeah <laughs> uh 228 um two books from Aconite. i don't know she hulk goes to murder world a marvel multiverse missions adventure and then there's also one which i'm not as interested in you are not deadpool a marvel multiverse missions adventure i assume this is like a choose your own adventure type story yeah, it says game um, book underneath it. Yeah, this is a game book. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that five by eight size is about the size of what mm. I remember those choose your own adventure books to be. Yeah. I'm assuming that this is what that is. I will probably pick up the She Hulk one just to see what it is and find out a little bit more about it. Um, but if you, again, it's kind of like reliving my childhood with choose your own adventure, I think that's what this is going to be. Um, 352 pages, which is a lot thicker than those choose your own adventure books used to be. Um, so I will, I definitely want to check out one of these at least. <laughs> and I guess it's just text because it does not give a artist credit. Mm-hmm. It only has the writer credit. Usually they say prose at the bottom. Right. Um, so it doesn't say prose, but it does have that game book, which I guess is just basically the 
uh, their way of warning you. <laughs> it's game book could also be RPG. It well, I it could, but these are definitely because if it was RPG, they tie it to a system. Oh, okay, gotcha. You know, so yeah, so I can't un- <laughs> unless multiverse missions is the is their new system. Like yeah, because they just they released the beta for that new system book. Um, I thought those and I think those came out, but if I'd ordered some, I don't know where they are if they did. So I don't know. Maybe they didn't come out yet. I don't, I don't know. They're due <laughs> soon. So, <laughs> um, and then, uh, I don't know, Mike, you got, what is it? Page. Uh, I got, uh, okay. For Ahoy. I got two thirty. Yeah. Oh, two thirty. Okay. Go ahead. Um, in aftershock, we've got the brother of all men, uh, which is uh, set in 1928, based on a true story, which is kind of cool, uh, of a man who travels from the States to Canada to retrie- retrieve his brother from a cult that he's gotten involved with, but finds himself caught in the throes of the cult himself. Uh, it's it's uh, advertised as a horror mystery, like I said, based on a true story. Uh, weird enough that I was like, okay, I might have to check that out. <laughs> Aftershock does some some cool things sometimes, especially in that kind of horror mystery kind of realm. Uh, and then right on the next page is 232 is a book called there's something wrong with Patrick Todd. Number one. <laughs> um, and Patrick Todd's a tele tele mm, telepathic. There we go. Uh, telepathic 15 <laughs> year old with a sick mom. Uh, he's on the run and using his powers to control people to make them rob banks uh, so he can get the money from the robbing the bank without doing it himself. And then he makes the people turn themselves in. Um, and so uh, then they keep somebody actually starts catching on to what he's doing. And that's the story that they're telling in that series. Ed Brisson's writing that. And uh, he did a really good job on Beyond the Breach, which was an Aftershock miniseries that came out last year. Uh, so I expect that the the storytelling will be pretty good in this story as well. And that's my Aftershock Minute. <laughs> Mike, I figure you're next. Two forty-six. Well, it's just the obligatory, uh, you know, uh, touting of the Wrong Earth one shot. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if this is the. I think there's supposed to be five of them. I'm not sure if this is the fourth or fifth. But um, this one's. It's written by the creator of the Wrong Earth, Tom Pyre, um, and uh, it's. Uh, the multi-earth event concludes with a, a special written by Tom Pyre on, on Earth Alpha. Um, we have Dragonfly Man and Stinger meeting uh, their match, possibly with this uh, bad guy named Dead Doctor Meat. So, um, anyway, it's a uh, it's a really uh, good series. A lot of good one shots. A lot of good creators doing one shots. So, so it must um, be number five then. It it's probably conclusion. yeah. It's, it probably is yeah. It is. Okay. I'm actually not till 281. Um, I got 285. 270. Let me zoom down there. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> okay, so this is by my probably my favorite new uh, company, um, and that's AWA Upshot. Uh, it, they put out some pretty good stuff, and uh, it's called Ab- – the book is called Absolution. Um, wait a second. I'm losing a totally lo- – that's not the same page I have written down. Um, so we're just going to go with Absolution by AWA <laughs> uh, Upshot, and I can't find where – you know any more about it because I think I wrote that. Oh, here it is. It's on the 270, so I apologize. Yeah. Anyway, it's written by Peter Milligan, illustrated by Mike Diodato Jr. He's a great artist, and it's a science fiction uh, type book. And uh, for mature readers, it appears, is it a one shot? Looks like either that or it's an ongoing. It doesn't say it's a limited series. And uh, it's about a, a, the protagonist is Nina or Nina Ryan as a hired killer and uh, now she's uh, has a month to prove that she can change and uh, it's 
It sounds like a lot of fun, a lot of adventure. Got a variant cover by Frank Cho. Uh, so yeah, it it just it just kind of reached out and grabbed me. Yeah, they. I mean, AWA. I agree. We we talked about that new think last month. Yeah. Um, that they're soliciting an issue two on. I started reading that Devil's Highway that's actually on the neck on seven two seventy one. Also, uh, read the first issue of the first volume uh, a couple of nights ago on accident. Not on accident. I mean, I purposely opened it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I I was like I didn't I wasn't even paying attention. I was like, oh, the cover looked cool and it was a really good story. I'm gonna keep reading it. It'll probably yeah. be in my review of what I've been reading next time we talk about things. Yeah, AWA stands for, I think, Artists, Writers, and Artisans. And it's oh. really focuses on, you know, create your own stuff. And uh, I think I first was exposed to them with the Garth Ennis, uh, Marjorie Finnegan, the time traveling thief. Hmm. And I really liked that series. It was like an eight issue series. 331 is next for me. So I got a while. 281. Uh, Alpha Beta is number one. Uh, I mentioned this because it's written by Kyle Starks, who was at my convention last year. Um, mm-hmm. He um, is the writer. He, you know, of course, is probably best known for his work on Rick and Morty. Um, he's got another book called I Hate This Place, uh, is what is typically referred to as <laughs> <laughs> um, in the solicits. Uh, but uh, it, this is based on like a apparently like a YouTube comic. So they've adapted this YouTube comic to a, a new series. So I guess if you are a fan of Rick and Morty, then this may be uh, <laughs> something else for you to pick up. And um, I got something soon. I didn't write the page number down, though. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can find it here. It's before 295, I can tell you that much. I got 285. Okay, we'll go ahead while I'm looking for... Okay. Uh, from Blue Juice Comics, we have Knights of the Fifth Dimension number one. That's and what I was looking for. <laughs> was it really? <laughs> yes. Uh, this actually, uh, there was a a preview copy of this. I don't even know how I got a hold of it, when I got a hold of it, uh, but it was years ago. They 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 pushed out the the first issue of this, um, and it is uh, kind of a very meta book about this guy who uh, has. Uh, he he's creates this comic book and he's getting older and he needs to hand off the reins to this other uh to this new artist writer uh the book's called psychedelic knights of the fifth dimension uh but it turns out that there he's doing more than just creating comic books he's actually uh warding off these the evils the the bad guys in the book from coming into their actual dimension uh, it's it's drawn by Walt Flanagan, who's on Comic Book Men, one of uh, Kevin Smith's friends, um, and uh, was by... was <laughs> <laughs> apparently they had a maybe a falling out. <laughs> oh really? They yeah. talk about each other still quite a bit. Mm. Uh, and then written by Casey Van Heel, uh, which I'm not familiar with his work, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see this actually coming out and i believe that blue juice their website they're soliciting the full trade so you could even hop over there and get it all at once the monthlies and go yeah yeah. i think uh walt's not always been the most timely artist um (laughs) and so i'm wondering if that's why they waited they had the preview like years ago and then waited until he finished up the whole run before they started pushing it out uh 295s my next thing same. All right, well, I was just going to talk about the Monster Bash special <laughs> yes. number six with the Frankenstein's monster cover. There actually was a lot of Universal monster stuff in this uh, in this uh, catalog, though I am curious about this issue because apparently they're going to answer the question: Do the X-ray glasses <laughs> from the comics really work or not? So, if you're um, curious, yeah, I can t- I can tell you from personal experience, <laughs> I bought them as a kid. <laughs> and it's an optical illusion. You can't uh, see what looks like your bones in your hand. But mm-hmm. That's about it. But it stays on three twenty four. <laughs> Good with me. Okay, yeah. so page three twenty four. Am I there yet? No, I'm on three hundred eight. Three twenty four. Let me get there. Uh, we have uh, an in memoriam here uh, for Juan Jimenez, uh, who pa- who passed April. Uh, second of 2020 
uh, from complications of uh, COVID-19. Uh, he apparently did work on the Meta Barons, which is one of those European uh, sci-fi, really dense uh, comics. So uh, I just thought we should mention uh, uh, mention that yeah. since Diamond took the time to uh, mention his work. I have definitely seen some of his work before, but I would not have known him uh, not have known him by name because I have read some of the uh, Meta Baron stuff. It was like I said, it was just a little too a little too much for me. But the, I remember the artwork being good. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, my next things around three twenty seven, which actually were there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, I tell you what, IDW scaring me right now. Yeah, they're falling apart. They're, yeah, because like, okay, one last time they moved out of the front of the catalog. Now they don't even have covers on seventy-five percent of their uh, books, you know. So it's like, you know, preview image covers coming soon for almost all of their almost all of their their books. Yeah. Um, but uh, Rocketeer: The Great Race issue four on page three twenty-seven is listed the final issue um, of that series. Uh, and then I'm oh I didn't put a page number down for this. You got anything else on side one? I, yeah, three, I'm a, oh ahead. sorry, Shad. I got three thirty one. What do you have, Shad? Yeah, you're good. Go ahead. Okay, so uh I guess the, the name of the the uh publisher is It's Alive, but the, the book is called A Girl and Her Dog One Shot. Uh it's about uh basically uh delivers moving love letters to dogs uh in a in a girl and her dog lv or ev is the girl and max is her dog uh it's a time tossed bits and pieces we see her life from the age of 15 to 84. Uh, max is there for all the important moments of her life even after his life has ended this is something you know i would probably read but i would get it for my wife and <laughs> just watch the tears flow so <laughs> it does look pretty good. Um, three eighty two is my next. Okay, so go ahead. Okay, uh, from Oni Press, we have Blink Number One, uh, and it claims to be a found footage horror comic. A uh, lot of lot of weird uh, movie kind of trope crossovers into comics this month. Um, and, uh, I, I like found footage horror. I, I, I do sometimes, too, most yeah, of the time. They can be done pretty well if they're mm-hmm. done right. And, uh, so how does that play into comics? I don't know, but I'm definitely willing to try out. <laughs> I think this is something, I don't know how much past issue one, uh, might be one of those that I'm like, oh, I'll throw that in the wish list to pick up digitally when it goes on sale or something mm-hmm. like, <laughs> I'm like the perfect book for something like that. Cause it's interesting, but maybe not enough to to have in on my shelf. <laughs> I think that's it for me on the on the side. Okay, I, I Titan uh, just going to mention Doctor Who, not to mention any of the comics. So there is some Doctor Who books solicited from Titan, but news. Uh, for yes, for Doctor Who fans, there's a new Doctor. So Jodie Whittaker was replaced. I don't remember the name of the new Doctor. Just know that he replaces Jodie Whittaker on the series. So I think he was an actor in like Sex Education or something like that. Okay, I, it's like the name of the show. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. Uh, but I don't remember his name. Yeah, I don't remember his name. So <laughs> I should look that up. But it was. Uh, it wasn't as easy to pronounce as Jodie Whittaker. Is. Yeah, <laughs> I know that for sure. But well, let's see. Let's just let's just find out. New Doctor Who because we do have the internet. Uh, yeah, N C U T I G A T W A. <laughs> and Kudi Gatwa, funny. yeah, uh, is my is my guess. So there's not a pronunciation. <laughs> so while while we're talking about taking a, an internet break, uh, I did do a Google on the Marvel Multiverse Missions books, uh-huh. and there is a it it reads as a choose your own adventure for the most part until you get to this one sentence where it says packed with adventure, snark, cool interactivity. And some truly fiendish puzzling, complete with their own game system, and a whole extra hidden layer of secret wonders. Oh, hmm. So it says choose your own adventure, but then it also references a game system. Um, so I don't know. The answer is still I'm not sure. You'll have to get okay. one of them. 
<laughs> well, I know there's a company. I'm trying to remember the name of the company. Shoot. Um, but they produce some of these. They're kind of like a, it's like a, an RPG, but it kind of, you, you read the thing, you fight the fight with their system. And then you, if you win, you go here. If you lose, you go here, mm-hmm. that type of thing. And maybe it's something, something along that lines. Gotcha. I, should, uh, I should come up with the name of that company, but, uh, <laughs> uh all right. So side two. Yep. Uh, my first thing's on page 33 of side two. So, okay. Is it me? All right, I believe scrolling, so. scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I have to get through all the manga. Maybe I should click down there because it's going to take forever to scroll through all the manga. <laughs> there we go. That'll get me there faster. So, um, oh, so there's some um, Count Chocula and Frankenberry, <laughs> uh, six inch uh, die cast figures. So um, I'm definitely expecting to see these uh, show up at Muddy Monster Comics. Hmm. Uh, yes. If- they're not necessarily for sale, but uh, for dis- certainly for display. So. <laughs> well, to keep along with the the monster theme on page thirty five, we have Frank and Snoopy in the reaction figures. <laughs> um, there's a bunch of of uh, peanuts of specifically Snoopy uh, characters in there. But if we're if we're on the muddy monster lookout, That's we right. got a Frank and Snoopy. Uh, of course, I don't know, Mike Hutchinson. Are you not going to talk about page thirty two? I I will if you let me take a look. Okay. <laughs> if you shut just, up for just, one moment. Yeah. I, just, <laughs> I didn't really have, I mean, nothing caught my eye, but I probably oh. didn't go through it slow enough. 32, we have. Lower left. The Popeye oh, Classics see. way. Page, page 31 was Alf on the lower. Oh, Popeye. Yeah. Yeah, page 32. <laughs> Page 32. Uh, yeah, Popeye Classics. Uh, <laughs> two and, two and, um, or Wave 2, 112 scale figures. And it includes Wimpy, Wellington. It includes Popeye in his sailor gear. And it, it also, you have Pappy. That's Popeye's, uh, or Poop Deck Pappy. That's his father, I think. <laughs> and then Sea Hag. So I, I'm glad you caught that because I missed it. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. Uh, my next thing is on 38. I got 38 also, yeah. Okay, so you, we're probably talking about the Universal Monsters six inch uh die cast figures to go along with the Frankenberry and Count Chocula. That's There's right, a, uh, yeah. I got the Bride of Frankenstein, creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, Frankenstein's monster, and of course, they got an accessory kit for the mummy. So, <laughs> well, and the one that I'm I'm kind of honing in on is the uh, the Universal Monsters Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle <laughs> team up. Uh, this is the the second one that we've gotten because we had the Hunchback uh, with Leonardo, I think, last time. Uh, so Michelangelo is the mummy in this month's. Um, so we've got two more to go, maybe more. Who knows what they'll end up doing there? My next is on seventy four. Um, okay, I better click down there. Boop, boop, what page? 71, 72, 73, 74. Here it is. Uh, oh, went too far. <laughs> the white zombie, Bella Lugosi as Murder Legendre, one six scale figure. So, this is apparently is from a movie from 1932 that I okay. have never heard of before. So, I'm gonna have to try to uh, to track that down. But with the Bell Lugosi, uh, I thought we should definitely uh, point that out. For I believe that that is the movie that you get the band White Zombie from as they took the name from the movie. Oh, really? Because uh, it was all kind of based in old classic horror movies. It was a lot of their theme, which hmm. is Rob Zombie's band before he went solo. Okay. Uh, 91 for me. I wonder what you're going to talk about there. I wonder. Did you have this down as well? I did as well. well you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Still on, on Monster Lookout, we've got mm-hmm. the Bella Lugosi wearable masks, uh, which we have. Uh, let's see. We got the Bella Lugosi Dracula, the Igor, uh, the uh, white zombie previously mentioned. Uh, is that it? Those are three. Yeah, those are the three masks there. Maybe two different kinds, though, because it looks like they're. Two different yeah. colors. I didn't read the full solicit, so. Yeah. That's weird that they have the, um, um, oh, 
white zombie there too, which is again something I never heard of, and now right. it pops up and that pops up twice. Twice, you know, which is yeah. Why do they have? I guess maybe when you maybe you had to buy it by the box, and there's like two per. Because they get that per? times two there. Yeah, but they're showing. I don't. It's no, the color. Different. You know, no, the coloring is different on them. Yeah, the coloring's but, different, and they have a times two on them. So maybe there's twelve in there, and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's an amazing oh, retro window box. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety four. Yeah, I was just going to comment on page 92. You got uh, under the supplies section, we have uh, short box, uh, printed short boxes. One is uh, mm. Black Panther themed and the other is retro X-Men. And it looks like the Marvel's uh, Alex Ross type art. Uh, I'm not read. I don't see if it says that in the uh, in the write up or not, but I really like that X-Men. Uh, box and i i like to I, over time i like replacing all my standard boxes with those printed ones i wish yeah. they printed more but i wish you could just buy one in the in the previews and instead of having to wait for somebody to order them and you walk into that store yeah <laughs> right on page 94 i went too far there is a game here called Betrayal at House on the Hill board game. I'm going to assume that this is just a new edition. Um, this is a, a really, really fun game. Uh, basically, you have uh, two to, I don't know, four or five players uh, play this game. And then at some point, you're going to have this event occur. And then it's going to change where instead of everybody being on the same team, you're going to potentially have one versus four um, for an end game. Uh, there's actually a better version of this game that is based off of uh, D&D, and I think it's, um, oh gosh, it's like a Baldur's Gate is, I think, in the title. I can't remember the exact title off the top of my head, but uh, they're both um, they're both fun and uh, interesting games if you've got a, a group of people that you like to board game with. Mm. And nice. that is it for me that's all the pages that's all of the pages mike you got anything else no i do not i didn't even really plan on talking about the boxes but you guys had <laughs> more than average uh <laughs> things to talk about in the back of the book so I don't yeah well we you know we, we've committed to talking about anything universal monsters you know because that's true again, yeah that's you know that's what that's one of mike's passions so we want to make for sure that people are aware of those things absolutely mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, because I forgot to do this, and so I'm going to be putting myself on the spot as well as everybody else. Uh, what either of you is a book that you are particularly looking forward to out of this? Uh, I've got a couple of books that I'm looking forward to. Uh, one of them being the Basculus number nine with the start of that final story arc. Uh, and then the uh, issue one of the Knights of the Fifth Dimension from Blue Blue Juice Comics. Okay. Mike, anything you're particularly looking forward to? Probably the Batman 125 with that starts the uh, Chip Zdarsky version, uh, his run. Uh, honestly, I, 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 I like, I mean, he's like one of my top five writers, so I want to see what he can do with the Batman well, I'm going to go with the Mind Management Bootleg uh, first book from Flux House, with Seth Matt Kent is doing the writing on that, and it's going to tie into his Mind Management series. That's definitely something that I'm going to uh, look forward to getting around to reading that one. Um, all right. Anybody got any investment picks they want to throw out there? Um, I'd say definitely Skybound X number 25. We're talking about uh, four all new upcoming comics being previewed in there. So uh, whether we like it or not, there's definitely a potential for something to happen in there, especially with there being one of them being an invincible book. We got the invincible cartoon on Amazon, the movie being developed easily. A new character could pop up from in there, in there. Uh, and then the other one uh, that I had, I got a little like, uh, like maybe, maybe this could be a thing was, uh, the Batman 125 only because you've got a new creative team 
And the story is about a bunch of billionaires being murdered. Uh, and we could easily see one of those new billionaires show up in either the Gotham TV show that they're, or the, mm-hmm. the TV shows that they're making, or in the Batman two, uh, they could make a new name, throw that new name out there as, as a nod to the current series, mm-hmm. if it's good enough. And all of a sudden that books, the first appearance of some random no name billionaire that we've never heard of. It's a good thought. Yeah. Mike, you I'm got a book you want to, uh, well, it's, it's kind of funny on? because. It's funny, uh, Chad picked uh, my what I'm looking forward to book as his investment, and I'm picking <laughs> what you're looking at, what you're you're look, looking forward to book as my investment book, only because I don't know if new imprints can have value over time. Um, I, it's possible, I guess, but I'm thinking the the Dark Horse uh, Mind Management uh, book um, being the the first uh, under that first imprint um by matt kent or the 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 inaugural book under his new imprint yeah well i'm gonna go with above snakes for the reason i talked about uh since that since that thumb series was part of mcfarland's studio this would be a perfect follow-up if something comes of of that thumb series so you know something you could you know, buy definitely would have to sit on it for a while. It's not something that's going to be a, you know, a buy and, and turn and flip immediately uh, type of a situation, but there could be some long-term potential uh, for that series. And then, you know, mm-hmm. you, you just have to mention, you know, all the various books that had new characters potentially popping in Yeah. Um, there. Cause there were several, you got monolith and Hulk number nine. Let's see. There were a couple in DC, uh, Trinity and Swamp Thing 15, Dreamer and Superman Son of Kal-El 13. So any of those could be potentials, but I think the the biggest potential is in that uh, Above Snakes number one. So, All right, so that's going to bring us to the close of another uh, previews episode. Uh, Shad, we really haven't talked about what we're planning to You're do right. next. <laughs> So I'd say probably it's pretty safe to say we'll talk about Neil Adams and mm-hmm. George Perez in our uh, next episode. And I, you know, Absolutely. that could be one of those conversations that could go uh, quite a while. Right. <laughs> that and a shake. I'm sure we'll, we'll and, yeah. fill up oh, yeah. a, an episode real quick. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, so be looking for that. Mike, somebody wanted to reach out to you. Um, where would they uh uh, where would they do that at? And that would be at mike.atchison90 at gmail.com. All right. Shad? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at uh, Shad Schubert, S-H-A-A-D-S-C-H-U-B-E-R-T. And as always, check out the Can't Get Rights. We're playing places around Southern Illinois. All right. And this is Scott Reed. You can find me at bergcomics.com, B-U-R-G comics.com. Uh, May 14th, I'll be in Evansville, Indiana at Washington Square Mall for a almost completely comics show. Uh, and then uh, June 9th and, or 9th and 10th. Yeah. 9th and 10th or is it 10th and 11th at Superman celebration. Uh, I'll be there July 23rd at the muddy monster uh, comics. And then bird comics con will be uh, Saturday, September uh, 3rd, Labor Day weekend uh, coming up later this year. All right. So we'll be back soon with uh, another episode and we will talk at you then. Strange Adventures 180. Here we go. Buy it now. You know, okay, right now. Price plus shipping, lowest first. Okay, <laughs> mine's in better shape. It's it's probably a hundred dollar book. There you go. <laughs> <One> point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just you know, I just can't see him out here. Ew, man! I just, <laughs> I just yeah, I just have to keep it for that reason alone. So I'm really sorry. Ew!